Hi, my name is Vince Farrell and I'm an Applications Engineer here at Hawkard Systems. This is the second part of my series on tolerance analysis where I'm actually going to complete my tolerance stack up on this sheeter assembly. For reference, tolerance analysis is available in SolidWorks Premium as an add-in. Hopefully you have seen my first video by now on setting up DIM Expert on your parts, which is needed to do your tolerance analysis study. If you haven't, please take the time to watch it unless you are already familiar with DIM Expert. So now that we've set up DIM Expert on all our parts, here's our sheet air assembly and you can see there are a lot of moving parts in this assembly. Let's go over to the knife subassembly, which is really what I'm interested in and that's these two knives moving up and down here. The main thing that I want to accomplish is to have a tolerance stack up so that my blades aren't too close together so that they bind and that they aren't too far apart so that they don't cut, which in this case is about a quarter inch distance. I need to do a tolerance, tall analyst study here to accomplish that. Since tall analyst is an add-in, I'm going to go over to the DIM Expert Manager and I can actually see that the tall analyst study icon is available. If you don't see it, click on your SolidWorks add-ins and command manager tab and make sure that's turned on, or you can go to this arrow next to your system options, select add-ins and make sure that tall analyst is on right there. So there's a four-step process to setting up a tall analyst study. The first is to define the measurement you want to control. The second is to define the assembly sequence. The third is to define the assembly constraints of for your study and the fourth is to run the analysis and adjust the tolerance as necessary. Let's start our tall analyst study. The first step is defining the measurement. What I'm interested in is the distance between these blades here so I'm going to select those two faces. I get the nominal value of 0.1 and now that we've completed the first step I can hit the next arrow here and it takes us to the second step. The second step is defining the assembly sequence. We start with the base part, which is the bottom knife block, and we're basically telling SOLIDWORKS how this assembly goes together. Bottom knife block, lower knife blade, then these two guide pins, then these bushings, then the upper knife block, and finally the upper knife blade. See how SOLIDWORKS gives me a nice green message telling me everything is selected and I'm ready to move on to the third step. On this third step, SOLIDWORKS is actually taking all of the mates that are in my assembly and asking me how I want to set up those constraints for my tall analyst study. I don't have to use all the mates within my assembly. For instance, on this lower knife blade in relation to the no lower knife block, you can see that there are two constraints there. A coincident mate between the back of the blade and the knife block and a coincident between the bottom of the blade and the knife block. We're really not that concerned with the bottom one because we're just concerned with the measurement between the two faces. So I'm going to select that first mate and then which is that coincident mate and you can see how I get a green check next to the component and then I get a primary constraint down there. Now for some reason I did to need to use that second constraint in the study I could select that two right there but in this case I don't need to. I can just click right there in my property manager to that third component which is the guide pin. We only have one constraint there, so we just select it and repeat the same process for the second guide pin. Now we have the bushing, and the bushing has two mates on it, the bushing ID and the bushing OD. In this case, we're interested in just the bushing ID constraint because we just defined that guide pin. We're going through sequentially and defining the constraints between each neighboring component. I'm going to pick the bushing ID and go to the second bushing and select its ID as well. Now we get to the upper knife block. You can see that I keep zooming in and out because sometimes these flyouts go off in crazy directions, so we need to pull those all in so we can see better. As you can see, 
Up until now, when I hover over a flyout, it gives a preview of the two surfaces that are related by that constraint. That's extremely helpful in this instance since we have six constraints we can pick for, from. Since I defined the bushing ID and the guide pin are already, I'm interested in the bushing OD and the knife block. If I select this one, you can see it highlights those two faces and I'm going to select that number one as the primary constraint since that's really all I care about in this case. Over here is the same thing, so I'm going to hover over the flyouts to see which one is correct. This is the correct one, so I'm going to specify that as my primary constraint. You can see here that I get feedback showing me what I actually selected here, and the bushing OD is what I had in mind. Of course, if that's not correct, I can always delete, delete the constraint and redo it. Last but not least is the upper knife blade. We need to pick either the blade top face or the blade mount face. In this case, we're interested in the blade mount face. So all of our constraints are defined. Again, we get a green message, so let's hit the next arrow. Now we actually ran the tall analyst study. If we take a look at the property manager, we can see the analysis results. In the analysis summary, we can see the nominal value, which is 0.1. We have a min, a max, an RSS min, and an RSS match, which are averages. And we can see here on the minimum value that the blades are actually going to crash in the worst case scenario since we're getting a negative number. Also on the max value, it's 0.321, which is way bigger than the quarter inch, so I'm going to need to fix those. Now if I go down to my analysis data and display, we can see here a list of contributors that are contributing to the tolerance stackup. You can see what percentage each one is contributing, and it's best to go through the biggest offenders first. Right here is whole pattern 4. If I click on that, I, get, I can see in the graphics area that I get the dimension and the tolerance. And if I double click on the tolerance, I can see that the tolerance is pretty big at 0.2. So let's change this to 0.04 to tighten it up. Anytime I change any tolerance like that, I have to recalculate my analysis. After I recalculate it, I go down here and I can see that it's a little bit better. The minimum is a little closer and the max is within the quarter inch, but overall it's still not quite there. So let's look at the next contributor, which is this whole pattern in the upper knife block. Again, we can see on the feature control frame that 0.1 is way too big, so let's change that to 0.04 and recalculate the study. Everything looks good now and the minimum is a positive number and the max is 0.211. We've done our stack up now and we know these blades will fit the criteria if all the parts in this assembly are made per print. We can export our results by hitting this button and it will generate a report in Excel for example so that you can pass out these results to whoever needs it. If you hit the green check, your study is saved right here and you can create multiple studies if you need to change anything. In summary, this was going through tall analysts and how you would set it up and how you would set up the study and change the study as needed. That will complete this video series. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.